In this video, we are going to learn about Ramsar Convention. What is it all about? What are their objectives and functions? Where are the Ramsar sites located in India? And many more such things. So without any further ado, let's begin. When you look at the word Ramsar, at first it might sound as if it is the name of a place in India. One can easily think of this name as an Indian origin. However, it is not the case. Ramsar is the name of a city in Iran. There was an international treaty that was signed in 1971. It is about global conservation and sustainable use of wetlands. As of now, somewhere around 170 countries are part of this treaty. And that's how it is known as Ramsar Convention. Now, what is a wetland? A wetland is a place where the land is covered by water or is present either at or near the surface of the soil all throughout the year. The moment you see a mixture of land and water, it becomes an intersection point between the terrestrial and aquatic ecosystem. Plus wetlands have moisture all throughout the year. That means it is home to aquatic plants, insects, amphibians, reptiles, birds, fish, mammals and many microbial bacterial communities. And that's what makes the wetlands the most productive ecosystem in the world when compared to rainforests and coral reefs. Wetlands are usually found in low-lying areas. They can be both natural and man-made. They can be coastal and inland, floodplains, swamps, marshes, mangroves, deltas and lakes. Even an agricultural field, like a paddy field, is a wetland. Wetlands can contain fresh water, salt water or brackish, which means both fresh and salt water. Now you have to understand that wetlands are very important. We can also go on to say that they are important for human survival. I mean, they provide habitat for animals and plants and supports a wide diversity of life. Many species of birds and mammals rely on wetlands for water, food and shelter, especially during migration and breeding. It helps to recycle nutrients that are so important for many other surrounding ecosystems. Then wetlands are like a sponge. They absorb pollutants and improve the water quality by filtering out sedimentation, decomposing vegetative matter and converting chemicals into a usable form. It also helps in recharging groundwater. Then wetlands like mangroves also protect shores from any kind of flood. At least it reduces the impacts of it by reducing the momentum of the incoming wind and water. Then wetlands also reduce soil erosion and increases soil fertility. Therefore agricultural lands near the water area will not lose soil due to the presence of a wetland. Wetlands also provide livelihood sources to humans in terms of agricultural produce, craft materials, timber production, medicinal plants, fishing, hunting. So all these are notable benefits of a wetland. You can now think why is it so important to conserve a wetland. And that is the reason the Ramsar Convention was introduced. Now how does this convention works? First of all, a country joins the Ramsar Convention. After that, it gets itself listed into the international effort for the conservation and wise use of wetlands. Once a country has joined, there are three commitments which have to be fulfilled. Number one, a country has to designate at least one of its wetlands into the list of wetlands of international importance, which is also called as Ramsar list or Ramsar sites. It can later designate more such wetlands. And the second commitment is, once a country is part of the Ramsar sites, being a part of the Ramsar convention, a country will gain access to the knowledge of how to conserve and make sustainable use of the wetlands. Some experts and officials from Ramsar advisory mission may visit the member country, analyze the situation and define how to tackle the threats. And the third commitment is, it also makes the member countries cooperate internationally on transboundary wetlands, shared wetlands systems and shared species. One more important thing about Ramsar Convention is that it keeps a check on all the wetlands that are there in their list, which is the Ramsar list. By check I mean, is there any kind of ecological change in the wetlands due to climate change, 
human interference or any kind of improvement due to technological development. If at all there are any notable changes in the wetlands, the convention then updates the record in Montreox record. The Montreox record is a register of wetland sites where changes in ecological character have occurred, are occurring or are likely to occur as a result of technological developments, pollution or other human interference. It is maintained by the Ramsar Convention. Now let's look at some interesting facts about the Ramsar Convention. 2nd February is considered as World Wetlands Day. It is the same day on which the Ramsar Convention Treaty was signed in the year 1971. Wetlands exist in every country and in every climatic zone, from the polar regions to the tropics and from high altitudes to dry regions. If you look at continent-wise, here are the number of wetland sites. Europe has the maximum number of wetland sites. The countries with the most sites are the United Kingdom and Mexico. India became a member of Ramsar Convention in October 1981 and designated Chilika Lake in Odisha and Keoladio National Park in Rajasthan as its first two Ramsar sites. Bolivia has the largest area with 1,48,000 square kilometer under Ramsar protection. The world's first site was the Kuburg Peninsula in Australia. It was designated in 1974. Now let's look at the Ramsar sites or wetlands in India. We'll go state-wise and I'll show it to you on a map. In Jammu and Kashmir, we have Hokera wetland, then Surinsar Mansar lakes, so Moriri and Vula Lake. In Himachal Pradesh, Chandartal wetland, then Pongdam Lake, then we have Renuka wetland. This is also the smallest wetland of India. Now going to the state of Punjab, here we have Harike Lake. It is a man-made lake and was formed by constructing the head works across the Satlaj River in 1953. After that we have Kanjli wetland and Ropar wetland. In Rajasthan, we have Keoladio National Park and Sambar Lake. Then in Gujarat, we have Nalsarovar Bird Sanctuary. In Madhya Pradesh, we have Bhoj Wetland. In Uttar Pradesh, the wetlands are near Upper Ganga River, which is basically the bridge ghat to Narora stretch. In Assam, you will find a wetland in Deport Beel. In Manipur, Loktak Lake. In Tripura, Rudra Sagar Lake. In West Bengal, we have East Calcutta Wetlands and the Sundarban Wetland. In Odisha, we have Bhitarkanika Mangroves and Chilika Lake. In Andhra Pradesh, we have Koleru Lake. In Tamil Nadu, Point Kalimir Wildlife and Bird Sanctuary. In Kerala, we have Ashtamuri Wetland, then Sasthamkota Lake, Vembanath Coal Wetland, it is the largest wetland of India. So this was everything you have to know about the Ramsar Convention. I hope I didn't miss out on any point. If at all I missed anything, put it down in the comment section. If you wish to read the transcript of this video in the form of an article, the link of the page is available in the description. I hope you have found this video helpful. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.